Hello and welcome to the lesson which is on vector basics. So remember vectors have a magnitude and a direction um, as opposed to a scalar. So there's vectors and there's scalars. A scalar is just a quantity that has a magnitude only, so a size only. It doesn't have size and direction. So um, scalar is a quantity described by magnitude only. Some examples are time, um, length, speed, temperature, mass and energy. Um, whereas a vector is a quantity the sky described by magnitude and direction. So where speed is the scalar, velocity would be the vector. Uh, where length is the, or distance is the scalar, displacement would be the vector. Force is another one, um, momentum, electric and magnetic fields, acceleration and so on are all examples of vectors because they have a size, which is a described as magnitude and a direction. So vectors are often named with capital letters. We, there's different ways to do them. Sometimes you use P and Q and all that kind of thing. So vectors are often named with capital letters with arrows above the letter or as lowercase letters in bold. Um, so to draw them in bold, maybe you'd have to draw them in with thick kind of writing. You'll see some examples coming up. They are represented graphically as arrows. The length of the arrow, arrow corresponds to the magnitude of the vector. So the longer the arrow, the bigger the magnitude of the vector. So if the vector represented um, velocity, the length of the arrow, if it's a longer arrow, then it's a bigger velocity and so on, greater velocity. The direction the arrow points of is, of course, the vector direction. So here's some examples. So vectors are often named with capital letters with arrows above. Here's an example, OA. So meaning from the origin, O for the origin in this case, to point A, and so O would be here, Point A would be here, the vector OA would be the line that connects and it goes in this direction. So it's got an arrow head this way. So they could say 20 meters per second. So 20 would be the length of the arrow. So if you worked out the, um, if you use Pythagoras, you knew this length and this length and use Pythagoras to work out the hypotenuse, you would get 20. Um, and the direction is 35 degrees northeast. So we've got north, east, south, west. So northeast is in between north and east. And this one would be 20, 35 degrees northeast, meaning starting at north, you rotate 35 degrees in an easterly direction. So 35 degrees here, not here. It's 35 degrees in here, if you want to mark that in. Another one is to remember sometimes they um, uh, can be lowercase letters in bold. So here's an example of a vector written in uppercase letters with an arrow or a lowercase single letter but in bold indicates that it's a vector so it has to be drawn thick um, so b equals 120 knots at 60 degrees southeast so 60 degrees southeast down here and the length of this vector would be 120. Um, another example sometimes you might see it written like this in your textbook i think you see it written like this in this mainly it's possible in some books to see it written like this but normally it's not so 5.8 miles per hour west so meaning that length is 5.8 and it's facing a westerly direction um, so what are also vector components so remember each vector it's got an x component and a y component because x in the horizontal direction y is in the vertical direction so each vector can be described by its um, hor by its horizontal component first and then its vertical component it goes x y alphabetical order so we can break a vector into its x and y components we write it like this x y meaning going from the beginning x is how many points you moved horizontally y is how many points you moved vertically so we call this a column vector because it's in the form of a column x on top of y we've got a big bracket around it for the vector above, it has moved three units in the x positive x direction and six units in the positive y direction. Therefore, we can write it as 3, 6. If you wrote it as 6, 3, that would be wrong. It has to be the horizontal first, the x direction, and then the y direction. If it moved left instead of right, it would be negative 3. If it moved down instead of up, it would be negative 6. So here's another one going this way. So it's gone two units to the left and four units up well this if it was two units to the left four units up for example you would write it like this and um, that's an example of a column vector moving right along more about unit vectors uh, so a unit vector by definition it's got a length of one unit so hence a unit vector has a length of one 
the standard unit vectors in two dimensions because at some point we're going to learn about three dimensional vectors with three dimensions to it but if it was in two dimensions um, you might not have learned this in the past this is a new way of writing a vector you can write its vector like say so for example oa is a vector that connects point o to a going in the direction from o to a so notice if it was as a column vector you would write it as four two because it goes across four up two so you would write it as four two as a column vector if you were to write it as a unit vector you use i and j notation so you would say that vector oa so capital letters oa because there's no bold lowercase letter representing the vector so just use oa and an arrow above those say o from a o to a you go for i is the horizontal movement j is the vertical movement alpha like xy is an alphabetical order ij is an alphabetical order so it's gotten four units right so four i plus and two units up so it's plus two j if it went four right and two down you would have four i minus two j so four i plus two j is in this case because you went right by four up by two in three dimensions also, by the way, the standard unit vectors in two dimensions are I, meaning you go across one, in column vector form, across one, up nothing, and J would mean you went across nothing, up one. So in three dimensions, you've got X, Y, and Z directions. So I, J, and K are vectors along the X, Y, and Z axis. So if you're talking about three dim two-dimensional space, you've got an X axis and a Y axis. If you're talking about three-dimensional state, you've got an X axis, a Y axis, and a z-axis, kind of showing you kind of like one just on the next page, further down, I'll get back to here, oh, it's gone, I think it's on the previous one, oh, it's further along anyway, it was the next one above, anyway, going back to here, quite a nice round, um, okay, so I is going in the I direct, direct like the X, J is like the Y movement, and K is like the Z movement, X, Y, and Z-axis. So you'd have x, y, and z in three dimensions. In two dimensions, you just have x and y, which we represent as i and j. In three dimensions, we have x, y, and z, which are i, j, and k. So i corresponds to the x movement, j corresponds to the y movement, and k corresponds to the z axis movement. So on. Okay, moving on to vector magnitude. The magnitude, or another way of calling it, is the modulus of the vector, OA, is represented by the length OA and is denoted by the magnitude of OA. So remember in the past, on the, in the, so back to you. So the magnitude or modulus of the vector is OA. So in the past, these two lines here would have meant the absolute value of. But in vectors, these two lines here mean the magnitude. So if you're in the topic of vectors, the two lines here doesn't mean the absolute value anymore. It means the magnitude of the vector, meaning the length of the vector. So you can use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the magnitude of a vector. So in two dimensions, you've got a length and you've got a height, base and a height. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared, because notice that the x movement and the y movement form the legs of a right angle triangle, and the vector is always the hypotenuse. So to work out the magnitude of this vector, you just use Pythagoras' theorem. 4 squared plus 2 squared equals uh, 20, and then square root of 20 to get the hypotenuse is square root of 20, which using our thirds, 20 is the same as 4 times 5, and to simplify that third, you would say 2 root 5, because square root of 4 is 2, and 5 stays in the root sign. Vectors can also be written as lowercase bold letters, as we mentioned before, like P and Q and B and all that kind of thing. For example, instead of OA, you could write V, but notice it's in bold. It's lowercase and it's in bold. So when writing vectors by hand, some people instead underline the letters. So because, like, you know, it's pretty hard to draw it in bold. Um, when on in print, like say in typed work, like on here, you can make this bold easy. But in your exam, it's a bit hard to make it easy. So the way you need to denote that it's a vector is you have to put a V with a little line under it. So in your exams, when you talk, when instead of writing V bold, because you can't really do that, you need to write V with a little line. And then the examiner knows you're talking about vector V, not the variable V. Let's move along. Oops. OK, 
Okay, so let's do some examples of finding the magnitude of V using um, Pythagoras' theorem. So it's solution by find so a is four five so it goes across four and up five. Find the magnitude of a. They want you to find the length of the vector. So we know it goes across by four and it goes up by five. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem. Four squared plus five squared equals c squared. So the magnitude of the vector must be the square root of four squared plus five squared. Uh, so we use Pythagoras' theorem. So it's like the hypotenuse in c. Um, so c is a squared plus b squared square rooted, so put in 4 squared plus 5 squared is 16, 16 plus 25. Square root that, you get the square root of 41. Try to think, does that third simplify? No, it doesn't, because there's no square numbers other than 1. that divide evenly into 41. So root 41 and units, you could write as your units. Another example for a 3 dim um, dimensional axis. So see we've got an x-axis, we have a y-axis and a z-axis. So this is in three-dimensional space. You can have vectors moving in 3D because this one's got a horizontal movement, it's got a vertical movement and it's got a z-movement, like a height kind of. Um, so remember we use i, j and k notation. So in as a column vector, so as a, because notice this one it goes, on the x it goes minus 4, in the y it goes plus 3, and in the z, it goes, uh, what does it go, plus 2. Oh, sorry, no, it goes minus 4 in the x, plus 2 in the y, and in the z, it goes up by 3. So x, y, z, minus 4, plus 2, 3. You can see minus 4, plus 2 in the y, and plus 3 in the z. So we need to use ijk notation if we're to write it as a unit vector. So um, if you were to write it as a unit vector, it would be minus 4i, plus 2j, plus 3k. I, J, K. The magnitude of V, remember you can use Pythagoras in three dimensions. Pythagoras in three dimensions, you just find the square root of the X, Y, and Z, the sums of the squares of the X, Y, and Z, um, and find the square root of that. That's how you find um, the shortcut for doing Pythagoras in three dimensional space. Because it's kind of almost like, you know, the examples of the, um, the cuboids, finding the longest diagonal that fits in a box. So you find the square root of the length squared and the width squared and the height squared. So that squared plus that squared plus that squared equals 29, and square root of 29 doesn't simplify anymore. So the magnitude of vector v, we just use the sign that looks like it's saying the absolute value, but it's not saying the magnitude of v. Uh, okay, sorry, just had to pause for a second there. So you get square root of 29 as being your answer. So that's the magnitude. Square root of 29, you could write units if you want next to it. Um, and so on. However, a unit vector can be in any direction. Okay. Okay, girls, I'm still recording, by the way. No worries. Okay, so two vectors are equal if they have the same direction and magnitude. So um, for them to be exactly identical, they have to have the same direction and magnitude. So, for example, these three could be examples of equal vectors. They're all parallel, so they're parallel, they're facing in the same direction and they've got the same magnitude. They don't have to be sitting right on top of each other. They don't have to be sitting right on top of each other to be considered equal. They just have, need to have the same length, basically, which is the magnitude and the same direction. And then um, direction, if it was face, if one of them was facing the other way, it wouldn't be equal anymore. They have to be facing the exact same direction. Um, so two vectors are parallel if one is the scalar multiple of the others. The two vectors are equal if they're the exact same length and they're facing the same direction, but they can be considered parallel. They could be different lengths. So if they're different lengths but facing the same direction, they are considered parallel, of course. You can prove that they're parallel by proving that one is a scalar multiple of the other. So for example, these ones, see we've got a and 2a and minus 3a. So A and 2A are parallel, they're facing the same direction, and this is a scalar multiple of that one because you just need to multiply it by 2 to get it. Multiply this one by 2 and you'll get that one. Multiply this one by negative 3 and you'll get that one. So they're all scalar multiples of each other. Thank you. Well done, girls. Um, example, vector A, let's say, for example, is minus 2, 3. So to make vector A... So to make vector A, you go left 2 and you go up 3. To make vector B, you go left 6 and up 
9. These two are parallel because if you multiply these both by 3, you would get this one. So, so long as you can multiply this by something, it could be even by a fraction. Technically, you could say multiply this one by um, a third and you would get this one. Multiply this one by 3 and you would get this one. So just so long as you can multiply it by a number, you would get this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so because, and they're, scalar, they're parallel because you can say 3a is equal to b. If a is also parallel to c, for example, minus 10 and q, q must be equal to 15. So sometimes you might be told that two vectors are parallel. So if they're parallel, then one must be a scalar multiple of the other. There is. Yeah. So if a is this one, and you're told that a and c are parallel, you need to think, what do you need to times these both by to get that one? Times these by 5, and you'll get this one. So minus 2 times 5 gives you minus 10. That's how we worked out times it by 5. And 3 times 5 gives you q. So q must be equal to 15. This is a different question to that. So a and 2a are scalar multiples of each other. Oh, sorry, no. Yes, yeah, scalar multiples of each other, therefore they're parallel, sorry. Some other parallel vectors. So here's another example. Find the unit vector, so in i, j, um, k direction, find the unit vector in the direction of v equals 5i minus 2j plus 4k. Oh my goodness, what does it want us to do? So they want us to find it in the form of a unit vector. So remember by definition, what did it say a few pages ago? Go back to where it talks about unit vectors. What is a unit vector? In theory, a unit vector is a vector of length 1. So that's on one of the earlier pages, like I think page 5 of this book. It says the unit vector by definition is a vector of length 1. So if you worked out the magnitude of this one, you wouldn't get 1. But there's something you can do um, to make it a scalar multiple and then uh, make it basically divide all of these by the same number so that in total the magnitude equals 1. I'll show you how to do that. So at the moment, the magnitude of this vector would be the square root of 5 squared plus minus negative 2 squared plus 4 squared. So 5 squared plus negative 2 squared plus 4 squared gives you 45. Square root of 45, you can simplify that third, because 45 is 9 times 5. And 9 times 5, 9 is a square, so you can take it out the front and make it 3 root 5. So the magnitude of this vector would actually be 3 root 5. What do you need to divide it by? Um, so basically, what do you need to divide it by to make it equal to 1? To make this equal to 1, you need to divide it by 3 root 5, because 3 root 5 over 3 root 5 equals 1. And a unit vector has to have a magnitude of 1. So to make it equal to 1... So sorry, so as we said, so 3 root 5 divided by 3 root 5 equals 1. So that would make the unit vector magnitude equal to 1. So if V is a unit vector in the direction of V, therefore it has to be a scalar multiple. So what you could do is each of these, if you take each of these values and the X, Y, and Z values and you divide them by 3 root 5, then that's a way of making a magnitude, I mean a, a different unit vector whose magnitude would equal uh, 1. So notice what we took 5 divided by 3 root 5, because basically if you take this divided by 3 root 5, you're going to take the whole thing and divide by 3 root 5. So V equals 5 over 3 root 5 I minus 2 over 3 root 5 J plus 4 over 3 root 5 K. Feel free to, if you want to prove, work out the magnitude of this. If you square this plus the square of this plus the square of this and take the square root of that, feel free to do that, pause and do that on the side. You'll find that the answer ends up being 1. Feel free to pause and give that a go now. So hopefully you paused and you did that. So basically, just to prove that if you square this, like you basically we're doing this, but with this unit vector. So work out the magnitude of this vector. Uh, square this and you'll get 25 over 45 because 3 root 5 times 3 root 5 is like 3 times 3 is 9. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. 9 times 5 is 45. So this squared would be 25 over 45 plus this squared would be 4 over 45. Sorry, I'm just recording plus this squared would be 16 over 45. And then if you add 25 over 45 to, uh, what was it again? 25 over 45 to 4 over 45 to 16 over 45, 
you add it together, you'll get 45 over 45, which comes to a magnitude of one. So just proving that if you happen to plug these values into the magnitude equation, Pythagoras' theorem in 3D, you would come out with a unit vector of one. So what you can do is to basically turn any uh, vector into a unit vector, work out what its magnitude is as it is, and then divide each value here by um, the magnitude. And then you'll find that when you find the magnitude of that vector, then it ends up being one. So the vector has length one and is in the same direction as V because it's a scalar multiple. So this vector, it's a scalar multiple of this vector because we divided them all by the same value. Oops. Okay. So next example, find the unit vector in the direction of minus three I plus two J plus five K. The magnitude of V so remember, magnitude of V is using this symbol. This doesn't mean the absolute value. It means the magnitude of V. Uh, using Pythagoras in 3D, we've got minus 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 5 squared. So you've got 9 plus 4 plus 25 gives you 38. Root 38, um, there's no square number apart from one that divides into 38. So just leave it as root 38 units. So if V is a unit vector in the direction of V, so we know that it's... Um, the regular V is got a magnitude of 38. So to turn it into a unit vector, divide each of these values by the magnitude of V. So divide them that one by root 38, you get minus 3 over root 38i, plus 2j, 2 over root 38j, plus 5 over root 38k. If you plug that into Pythagoras' theorem, you'll get uh, 9 over 38, plus 4 over 38, plus 25 over 38, because 5 times 5 is 28, root 38 times root 38 is 38. Then add those together and you end up getting 38 over 38, which is 1. Oops, sorry. Here we go. Hmm. Okay. okay, addition and subtraction of vectors. So here's an example. I don't know why, but for some reason these things don't want to move. Addition and subtraction of vectors might be quite familiar to you, but we probably need to revise it. So imagine we've got AB going this way, and we're told that AB, you go across 7 and up 4, so you go across 7, up 4 to do AB. To do BC, so starting at B going to C, you go minus 1, so 1 to the left and 4 down. So that's been defined here. So find AC. So notice that AC, AC is a resultant vector, of AB plus BC. So AC is the same thing as AB plus BC. So to find AC, it's a resultant vector, so you just add vectors AB and BC, and it's got to go here and here. It's got to follow the direction of these ones. If instead, if I had given you CB instead, you could just change the signs and then you would have had BC. So CB would be 1, 4, BC is minus 1, minus 4. So to find AC, you just add vectors AB and BC to give the resultant vector AC. So good to write this notation now. AC, don't forget the arrows on the top, equals AB. Got to write the arrows on the top or else it's not a vector. Plus BC, arrow on the top or else it's not a vector, it's just a line. Equals AB is 7 over 4, plus BC is minus 1 over minus 4. Add them together, 7 plus minus 1 is 6. 4 plus minus 4 is 0. So it does make sense that AC could be 6, 0, because it's possible you could have gone 6 units to the right and you didn't go up or down, um, and so on. So just remember, so just add up the vectors. Remember that AC is a negative of CA. So AC is a negative of CA. So if they wanted CA instead, it would be minus 6 and minus 0 is just 0. So if they wanted CA, you would just go minus 6, 0. And so on. Here's a few more examples on the next few pages for you. Um, so we've got a uh, thingamajiggy. We know that AB is 1, 6, meaning you go across 1, up 6 to get from A to B. BC is 3, 1, meaning you go across 3, up 1. And CD is 0, 7, so across 0, down 7. Find DA. So DA is going this way. So that's something just to be wary of. So DA, oh my goodness. So DA, come up with a pathway for DA. So DA is DC plus CB plus BA. You can't do AB A, plus BC plus CD. Um, alternatively, you could find AD 
AD is AB plus BC plus CD, and then we have to remember to negate that, to find the negative of that. But we could go straight to DA. So I'm choosing to go straight to DA by doing working right out your plan, or else you can get a bit muddled. So DA is DC plus CB plus BA, using that one. So DC will be the reverse of this, so it'll be 0 plus 7 DC. CB will be the reverse of this, so it'll be minus 3 minus 1. PA will be this one, so it'll be minus 6, 1, minus 6. Add them together, 0 plus minus 3 plus minus 1 is minus 4. 7 plus minus 1 plus minus 6 is 0. So as I said, alternatively, you could have just worked out AD, but then you would have to remember at the end to find the reverse of that. Um, and sometimes people forget to do that. So AD is AB plus BC plus CD, which is basically that plus that plus that. And then, oops, and then you would get 4, 0, but then you just have to remember that AD is the negative of DA. So DA would be negative 4, 0. And some people would then, by accident, leave it like this and forget to turn it into that. So for me, I personally found it safer to go straight to what it should have been. But whatever works for you, so I need to get the right answer. You're good. Here's some more examples. In the diagram, FA, EB, and DC are parallel, meaning they're scalar multiples of each other. They're saying that AB equals ED, which equals A. Let's see. What does that mean? AB equals ED, which equals A. So that's already demonstrated on there. FA equals B. See, FA is B. EB is 3B. Where's EB? EB is 3B. So that's 3B going up this way, which is kind of written there. And DC equals 2B. So DC equals 2B. So that's all written on there anyway, but just double check because sometimes I don't fill it in. Express the following vectors in terms of AB or A and B. FE. So let's see. FE, 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 FE. So what's the pathway you could use to get FE? Well, you could go FA, um, then you could do plus AB, and then you could do the reverse of this one, minus 2B. So I'm going to use that pathway. I'm going to use FA plus AB plus BE. See, FA plus AB plus BE is the same as going from F to E. So AB plus A minus 3B. So that's 3B. So because you're going against the arrow, so it's minus 3B. So B plus A minus 3B. So B equals just B. So B minus 3B is negative 2B, and A so is just staying as A. And um, BC, let's see, BC. BC is here. What's a pathway you could use? You could use this one. You can go here, BE plus ED plus DC. So write out your little plan so you don't get muddled. BE plus ED plus DC, and then if something goes wrong, you can also maybe get a method mark. So BE is minus 3B, ED is plus A, DC is plus 2B. And then combine any like vectors. Minus 3B plus 2B is minus B. So we've got A minus B. There we go. Oops. FC. Uh, where's FC? FC is here. FC. Here we go. So there are lots of different ways you could do it. Which way did I choose to do it? I did um, FE. Because we know FE. Notice we know FE. So FE is A minus 2B. So that's why I filled that one in here with a little arrow going this way. A minus 2B is this one here. So I'm doing... To do FC, I'm going to do FE plus ED plus DC. So that's the path I'm choosing to go with because they're kind of nicely labelled. So FE is A minus 2B, ED is A, 2B, DC is 2B. So A plus A is 2A, minus 2B plus 2B cancels out. So that's why you've got 2A. And then DA, we might need to use something else that we've used already as well. Let's see. D to A, hmm, which way could we go? We could go here, here, and here. Alternatively, we could go here, here, and here, because they're all labeled as well, um, and so on. We could go here, here, here. So D, A, um, what did I choose to do? I chose to do D, E, plus E, B, plus D, A. I've chose just in case I got this one wrong. So just in case I got that one wrong, I thought it's safer to go with one that's already labelled by the question. So I did DE 
plus EB plus BA. Um, so DE is going against the arrow, so it's minus A plus 3B minus A. Um, notice what I should have also done is I should have little, little lines. It's not too bad in your working out, to be, but to be on the safe side, maybe put little lines under there. I forgot to put little lines under there. Because remember, um, because these should be bold, we can't draw bold on here. So I should have a little line here and a little line here, 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 and a little line there. Um, and this is DE is minus A, and then plus 3B, A, and then minus A. So minus A minus A is minus 2A, and then we've got 3B minus 2A. So you could have had negative 2A plus 3B too as well. That would have been fine. Just put a little line under the B and under here. So you can also write answers using unit vectors. Yeah. Um, so unit vectors, remember like an I, J, K, that kind of is a... So as opposed to column vectors, which have them in a column and just the numbers in there. So given that vector AB equals 3i plus 5j minus 4k and BC equals negative i plus 4j minus k, find AC. So that's a bit hard to see. Maybe let's have a look at it on this picture here. So AB you can draw like this because I, don't know, you know, I think the picture was already drawn for you. So given that AB is that one, and then BC is this one, find AC. So let's see, can we use AB plus BC is the same as going from A to C. So we can just use the fact that AB equals BC, sorry, <laughs> AC equals AB plus BC. Um, so it equals that one plus that one. So that plus that is 2i, that plus that is 9j, and that plus that is minus 4k minus k minus 5k. So that's a resultant vector. So AC is a resultant vector of doing AB plus BC, our resultant vector. Just add these two vectors together. So same with like adding column vectors, like that plus that would have given us 2, that plus that would have given us 9, that plus that would have given us negative 5. So as a column vector, that would be with brackets 2, 9, negative 5. But in this case, I wanted just pointing out you can write it as a unit vector form in IJK form. Yeah, here's another example. Feel free to pause and try it for yourself and then unpause and see if you've got the same answer as us. Um, okay, so given that BC, here's BC, is 7i minus 2j plus k and AC is i minus 6k and because there's a zero here, so meaning like there's no movement in the y-axis, find BA. So in a way, you could, might want to think of this as 1i plus 0j plus 6k, if that helps you. Um, so find BA. BA is going this way. BA is like going BC plus um, CA. Or BA is, is equal to BC plus CA. Another thing you might want to think of is also BC minus AC, because it's like saying that kind of thing, BC, BC plus CA, but we know what AC is. So you could work out what CA is by negating these, like making it minus one zero plus six, or you could subtract AC, doesn't matter. So if you're to do the BC minus AC, because it's like we're going BC plus CA, which is like saying BC minus AC, because it's a negative of this, then you would get seven I plus two J plus K, go to brackets around here, minus all of this. So it's important you have the brackets on the second one especially because it's like minus i minus minus here. So it's plus 6k. Oh, that be 7i minus i. What is it? Minus 2j. Don't add anything else to it. Plus k minus negative 6k gives you the 7k. So if you didn't put the brackets around here, you would by accident instead get negative 5k. So the brackets around here, put brackets around here anyway, but the brackets around here are absolutely crucial. Or else you wouldn't realise that this would be minus minus. So BA equals 6i minus 2j plus 7k. Um, okay, so here's some more drawing vectory kind of things. Two vectors are given. A equals 2i minus 1j minus 1k. And the other vector B is minus i plus 3j plus 4k. 
find a plus b and a minus b. That's easy enough. Just add these together and then do another one where you subtract them. Draw a diagram showing a plus b and another showing a minus b. Oh my goodness, what does that mean? Hey, so adding the two vectors gives a plus b. So I've got a here plus b there. So add the i's together. So notice we put brackets around it to be on the safe side. When you're adding, it's not such a big deal, but when you're subtracting, it is a big deal if you don't have brackets on the second one. So to be on the safe side, just put brackets on both. 2i plus negative i is 1i. Minus 1j plus 3j is 2j. Minus k plus 4k is 3k. Subtracting the two vectors, so doing a minus b instead, as I said, it's really crucial that you have the brackets around these ones. a minus b. 2i minus negative i is 3i. Minus j minus 3j is minus 4j. Minus 1k minus 4k is minus 5k. So very important. So now we're doing this one, b. Draw a diagram showing a plus b and another showing a minus b. What on earth does that mean? It just means something simple like this. Adding a to b gives us this, adding a to b, that one, that one, a plus b is going in this direction, seems a bit weird, subtracting from b from a is the same as adding negative b, so subtracting b from a, a minus b, so it's kind of like going a, take away b, so here's a, B is going in this direction, so that's why in this direction, because it's negative B, we're going in that direction. So A plus B would be this vector, and A minus B would be going in that direction instead. Because so you'd go A minus B, and then join that one up. So that's what we've done here, A minus B, and we're drawing that one. Negative B is the same magnitude as B, it's just in the opposite direction. So plus B is going this way, minus B is going this way. Same length though. Um, and that's the end of the lesson. Thank you.